anticipation, expectation, hype, all extremely high, was I let down. As a faithful fan of the franchise, I'll work as a catalyst to, uh, is it a faithful recreation of the game? Were liberties taken that should not have been? Is this one of those woke projects that everyone talks about on YouTube? And is it an entertaining piece of sci-fi content to digest? No, no, yes, no, I couldn't keep track of everything I just said, but was not let down. Other than the fact that there's only eight episodes, they did all drop at once, which is pretty sick because I like to binge the entire series. I don't like to just hang on the edge of my seat for an entire week waiting for the next episode. But there is only eight episodes in the series, which was a little bit, you know, I wish there was Mo. But I want to talk about what I think the Fallout show does right and the very few things I think it does wrong. General public reception has been very positive, 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. This isn't the public, but International Gamers Network over here, 9 out of 10. There's even articles coming out about why reviews are so good about the show, such as the performance of the actors, a really immersive post-apocalyptic setting. If you're a fan of the franchise, every smell and sound effect, but everything that you're used to seeing, tasting, touching while you're playing the games, it happens on the big screen. First of all, it needs mention that Todd Howard was on set for a lot of the shooting and Bethesda Studios was directly directly involved with this entire adaptation, and it needs noted that this isn't a recreation or a retelling of any of the stories of existing Fallout titles, but rather a new installation, a new standalone story in the Fallout universe. And me personally, I think that formula tastes better than something like The Last of Us show, where they literally just took the entire first game and then recreated it for the big screen. They both taste good, but if I was only going to grab one beakered and sip the vial, it would be the brand new original story, not the I've already played played this six or seven times because it's been out for 12 years since the PS3 era, but now it's brought onto the big screen, which did work good for Last of Us. I'm not saying I didn't like that show, but when a monkey wrench can get thrown into the cogs of that machine is when you've played The Last of Us several times and then you watch the show and certain things have been tweaked. For example, instead of getting T-boned at the intersection, a piece of an aircraft wing or engine hits the car. And also they physically change the appearance of several characters, probably to be more inclusive because it's 2024, which is totally fine, but if it's an already existing IP, an already existing game, and you're changing the uh, physical appearance of characters that we already know and love, that's a little bit weird. It's kind of hard to even say that because you'll get labeled as some kind of a, a closed-minded bigot or something. But really, all I'm saying here is when it's an original piece, a new story like Fallout, you can pick and choose whatever characters and cast members you want. But with something like The Last of Us, when characters that you're expecting are going to look a certain way look completely different, you'd be like, oh, oh, that's, that's, that's her or him? Cool. And then you just move on from it. But you don't have to do that here with Fallout because they're all new characters. Moving on from it, how are the actual characters? The performances of the actors and actresses. We'll start with the, the main gal. Didn't really like her character in Yellow Jackets very much. However, I think she nailed the completely clueless vault dweller discovering the wasteland for the first time perfectly. I think her performance was spot on. Bullet point in here kind of interject saying that I've heard a couple of really negative reviews saying that this is a woke title. Really what they mean by that is that there's a, a, a woman protagonist and there's a black guy on screen for a good part of the, the show. That right there is going to upset some people. Having said that, if you don't give a fuck about that and you're just looking for a good sci-fi action show to watch that truly does adapt the universe of Fallout from the games without actually taking direct story pieces, what I mean by that is you have all the factions, the Brotherhood of Steel, and obviously the vault Tech Vaults Underground, which are doing experiments on all their residents. But this is a new story being told. The most impressive performance here, in my opinion, is going to be Walter Goggins, who is an absolute beast of an actor. My first encounter with this gentleman on the big screen was in Sons of Anarchy, where he plays himself a Southern Belle. Go ahead and insert a little clip, shall you? That will do. My lips are sealed, although I might open them up a little bit for you. I do declare, Mr. Belvedere, that was quite a performance. Fast forwarding about 25 years, the man not only hasn't lost it, but has been uh, tuning his skills on screen and his performance as the ghoul. Very good. Very good. All of his mannerisms, the way he walks, talks, almost with some kind of a metrosexual strut where he's kind of like, hmm, it's kind of like the Johnny Depp pirate thing, but with a post-apocalyptic ghoul character. When you marooned me on that godforsaken spit of land, you forgot one very important thing, mate. Well, now that is a very small drop. 
in a very, very large bucket of drugs. Instead of sipping rum, he's sipping radiated water. Radiated? Radiated. But the side story of the ghoul alone is pretty solid. Trying to figure out how he became a ghoul because it's pretty apparent from the trailers. No spoiler territory here, even if you've just seen the trailer, haven't watched the show, that the ghoul wasn't always a ghoul. It almost looks like he was a, a smooth face, a human that was a vault tech representative, maybe shooting commercials for him. Something went wrong. We have no idea what. But now he's a ghoul and his family, he had a family. Where are they now? We're going to find all that out. Also, the side story of Maximus, who is the Brotherhood of Steel initiate, prospect, squire, as they call them. His character is good, not great. I will say there were a few moments where his face was not very expressive, and I feel like he could have portrayed more emotion as to what was going on on screen, although maybe that's what he was going for, was kind of just the like shock and awestruck factor of, whoa, there's something crazy going on, and maybe I should react hardly at all to it because I'm so awestruck. But he, his performance was one of the only ones where I thought there could have been a little bit more emotion ringed out of it, but um, still not, not bad at all, and I really do like his storyline because me personally, I've always liked the Brotherhood of Steel because of their gear. They got the Vertibirds, the power armor, the big guns. We're talking about 50 cals, Batman launchers, mini nukes, shit like that. The big guns here. It's the Brotherhood of Steel. It's basically the military, but cranked to 11. So I really wanted to find out what the Brotherhood of Steel was going to be like in this world, not to mention as soon as you see the power armor and shit, it's really cool. I was kind of concerned about some of the scaling compared to people in and out of power armor, but it actually is identical to the game. Somebody in power armor standing next to somebody not in power armor. About the same size and scale as in the game. Also, all the sound effects when they're crunching tile in the power armor because it weighs a thousand pounds. <laughs> Sorry, back on the performance of the cast. We'll talk about the power armor and all that shit later. Moses Arias. The first time I had seen this gentleman, I know he was a character in Hannah Montana, I believe, but I, I, I didn't watch that show. But he's also a character in one of my favorite knee-slapping, corny, silly, B-list gamer comedies, which I cannot think of the name right now, but I'll be popping up on screen. The box art, maybe a little clip. Damn, you look good. I would, I would do you. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. Not only was his acting very good, but also his character was the voice of reason when, uh, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but he's saying a lot of words that I strongly agree with. Those are the main characters. Everyone else is kind of a side character, an NPC that you might see for an episode or two, but I've pretty much covered all the, the main people and their performances. Now, I want to talk about the comedic factor because on Amazon, it lists this as an action slash comedy, so I was a little bit, you know, head scratching. Oh my goodness, same thing with Twisted Metal. I was expecting a pure action drama kind of thing, seriousness. And it's got some really silly knee slapping moments, but I do think that the humor is delivered better here in Fallout than something like Twisted Metal, which I actually enjoy that show as well. It's got Will Arnett and I also like the Twisted Metal games, so I'm gonna watch that. But the dry post-apocalyptic humor is sprinkled in in a non-forced manner, and I think most of the jokes are just humor is sprinkled in in a way that lands quite nicely. At least it did for me and my gal. The only caveat to this is episode six. They're talking to an overseer and he's acting real silly, real wonky, takes a sip of a drink, gets some surprise news, <clears throat> spits it out, you know, the old <clears throat> It was just kind of silly and forced. And that entire episode, I think, turned the silliness or wackiness knob way too far to the right. But luckily, all the other episodes taper it back to a, a appropriate level. So don't fear the comedy, embrace it. It's actually um, not overwhelming. It's not like a bunch of forced humor. It's just a little bit of comedy sprinkled in there that I think lands pretty well. As for how it stays true to the original games, everything is there. Vault Tech, Pit Boys, Radaway, Radiation King TVs. And to test this theory, what I would do is pause the screen at random moments when there's a bunch of decorations, a bunch of crap on shelves. And I would get right up close on my TV looking for things that look out of place, Somebody left their cell phone or a Starbucks cup out. Okay, that's a little bit too shameless, but maybe some decorations in the world that look a little bit out of place. And not only did I not find that, but every table that you look at in the background has Rataway, Sugar Bombs, Stimpak, Psycho, and Jet. Along those lines, all of the guns, I kept tapping my girl on the shoulder and being like, oh, look, it's the 10 millimeter. Or, oh, look, it's the assault rifle, or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all the guns, all the weapons, direct transfers from the game, the sound effects that go along with them. The only thing I was kind of hoping for, and I don't know how this would really be integrated, 
frustrated, but I had an idea and it never really happened. Was somebody going into vats for a second? Like maybe it slows down time and they're like picking out limbs and it shows the highlighted green and then they're blowing limbs off or something. A little slow motion vat section, but maybe that wouldn't work for the big screen. It wasn't included. But things like the soundtrack, you have all that classic pit boy 50s and 60s tracks that fade in at the perfect moment. If somebody's clapping rad roaches, crawl out through the fallout comes fading in. Now, as for pacing, I'm not going to say it's slow because it does seem like everything is very deliberate and I couldn't pick any scenes out that seemed like filler content or could have been removed to cut down the runtime or uh, could have been replaced with a cool action scene or sequence or anything like that because every line of dialogue, every what seems like a somewhat pointless conversation is actually adding to the backstory of one of those four or five main characters that I mentioned. Lucy, the ghoul, Maximus, Hank, Norm. Spoilers incoming. You are entering the spoiler territory room. You're hanging out with the people that have already finished the show or don't really care about having the entire plot spilled out for them. Pretty warning to click off the video. Uh, you're gone now, right? So from the games, we always know that Vault Tech is performing some kind of experiments. Each vault has a different experiment that they're doing on their residents. However, Vault Tech has never done anything as big scale despicable or, oh my God, that's crazy. Vault Tech is the devil as with the show where they are the actual company that drops the atomic bomb and causes the nuclear fallout in the first place. Then people start getting better on the surface, they hear about it, drop the bomb again to keep their vaults packed, basically. Make it look ripe for fiscal quarter three for the earnings reports and whatnot for the executives around the round table. So the plot with the three interconnected vaults can be a little bit complicated. What happened in vault 31, 32, and 33? And also how are vault tech representatives uh, kept alive for 200 years? Basically, they swap them out in these crypto cryopods to keep them charged up like a battery. And then they activate their other executives, basically when everyone that they would have known would have passed away. Anyway, yeah, it, it gets a little bit deep. The onion peels back some layers and, you know, it gets a little bit uh, kind of complicated, actually. My whole point here is that vault Tech is a lot more uh, the devil in the show than they are in the games where it's just, well, it's still bad. They're doing experiments on their residents in the individual vaults, but here they cause the entire fallout incident in the first place, which is fucking crazy, I thought. Also, the Brotherhood of Steel, they made them seem a little bit more villainous than in the games. I mean, they've always had some really hardcore ideals, you know, killing all sense and stuff like that, but they seem real, not the coolest in the show. I don't want this to be a very long video and I feel like I'm starting to get into rambling or repeating myself territory. So just to wrap everything up, not only was I not let down, but as a faithful fan of the series, I played every single Fallout game, including the top down ones that nobody plays. And Fallout 4, I have beat the vanilla version three times and I'm currently playing a heavily modded version on PC. You know, so big Fallout fan here, not so much 76. I barely play that game. I have a lot of complaints with it. Overall, I think it is a big letdown to the series, but the show was not. And I think it is another installation, another story, another chapter, another offshoot that adds to that Fallout formula. I don't know what I'm doing with my finger here. I guess I'm stirring the formula and then I'm going to swig it. I'm going to drink it because it went down pretty smooth. It was tasty. But those are my thoughts on the show. I really enjoyed it. I want to hear yours. Drop them in the comment section below. If you've watched the show, I want to hear about it. Did you like it? If you haven't watched it yet, are you going to check it out? Amazon Prime is the place to watch it. So what I did, I've had the Amazon Prime delivery service for like 12 or 15 years or something, which of course includes the video service, but that does have ads that pop up in between the episodes and I simply can't have that. So it's $3 a month to go ad free, which is sounds really small, but it adds up over time. So what I'm going to do is just go ad free for the, the show, which is what I did, and then cancel the ad free now. That's just that's what I'm doing. Have a tremendous afternoon. I'll see you later. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. So this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So mollywop that subscribe button like it owes you money and we'll have the same amount of fun to tomorrow.